Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today we're going to talk about pet nut wines. Petillant Natural. I love sparkling wines and of all sparkling wines I probably love champagne the most. But legend says that champagne was a mistake. And according to this legend, monks repeatedly were trying to get rid of effervescence in their wines. And most probably, monk Dom Perignon was not loudly gasping, I'm tasting stars, but in fact devastated yet again when in spring in the cellars some bottles were already broken and some were cloudy and full of bubbles due to continuing of the fermentation. Yes, this is the oldest way of making sparkling wine méthode ancestrale, or as we know and love to call these wines today, pet nut, pétillant naturel. So the first thing about pet nut we already know. It is essentially a sparkling wine that acquires its bubbles because the wine is bottled before the fermentation has fully finished. Thus, alcoholic fermentation now continues in the sealed bottle and CO2 has nowhere to escape allowing it to integrate within the wine. Because of that reason, pet nuts usually do not have a dosage, meaning that unlike for champagne, which is made by traditional method, no sugar is added for these wines. This is also the reason why most of them will have some sediment at the bottom because the yeast is not removed afterwards. Some producers will suggest to pour the wine gently in the glass so the yeast remains at the bottom of the bottle, while others will suggest to shake the bottle before you use it. To my knowledge, pet nut is not legally bound, therefore it can be made from any grape variety and in any region or country that supports grape growing. There are even some made here in Latvia from hybrid grape varieties. Yet there are great sparkling wines that actually must be made following Méthode Ancestrale, such as Limo Blanquette Méthode Ancestrale in southern France and Bouget Sardon in French Alps. Interestingly, when it comes to sparkling wines made by the traditional method, often non-aromatic grapes are praised as the best option. We very much see that in the production of Champagne, where even clones of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir that show less aromatic characteristics are selected. Yet pet nuts are often made from highly aromatic grapes, such as Gewurztraminer and Muscat. What is even more interesting is that pet nuts can be made from red grapes as well, Yes, I know, champagne is also made from red grape varieties, but pet nut can actually be red in color. In fact, it can also be pink or orange. The slightly sparkling, often cloudy wine style is closely associated with natural and sustainable wine movement. Producers who make pet nut will also farm their vineyards following organic and biodynamic methods, ferment their wines only with natural yeasts and limit the use of SO2. What might be even more important to some of us, these wines tend to have not high alcohol levels. I mean 11 or 12% is quite normal for them and some might even go below that. Taking all this into consideration, pet nut wines might be easier to find at independent retailers and restaurants, bars and shops that focus on sustainable and environmental cautious products. When it comes to food, pet nuts can be served with all kinds of light snacks, antipasti and cold cuts. However, it is a wine that does have a lot of flavor and is fun enough to be enjoyed as an aperitif or simply without any food. Sometimes I think that pet nuts might be easier to pair with events and places. For example, casual picnics in the beach or forest, informal gatherings with friends and garden parties. There are many lovely pet nuts available. One of my favorite ones is Obi Wine, made by Frederick Geschick in France, probably because it shares my love for Star Wars movies and it associates with my dog, Obi Wan. Mein Klang from Austria has several pet nut options to offer 
and I have always been a fan of what Klaus Preisinger does. There is one that I have not tried yet, but really would like to. The Astro Bunny from Australia, which is project done by Master of Wine, Tim Wildman. You might probably be also interested on the geeky stuff how champagne is made. Click here.